what we've actually built is a tab. Um, we've called this app application a the meetings capture application. And what it allows me to do is within the context of this particular Microsoft team, and in particular, this particular channel of a team, we can go and create meetings um, that are in the future with agendas, um, with people attending, um, as well as pre-read documents, um, and even tasks that we can create to associate with people um, around those pre-reads. And then when the meeting is actually live, we can capture the notes of the meetings, uh, uh, date attachments, create new tasks and actions as we have discussions in the meetings, and then afterwards actually kind of publish that meeting and sign off if you want to be that official, like a lot of board meetings or committee meetings or governance council meetings do. So just to give you an idea about what we're doing here, when we create the meeting, um, I'm actually going to do one just as in context of what we're doing today, which is the community call uh, for February uh, discussion. And you can see that it's already added me as an attendee, but it's also added um, Elisa here, who is part of the Contoso board and has also been part of meetings in the past that I've worked on with that particular person. Now I can go in here and add um, a lot of other people in, and it's using a people picker here um, to make those suggestions. So I can go and add Todd, who's in the call here, and add him in as an attendee. And you can see that it's doing nice little simple things like adding um, their photos that are stored within the profiles in Microsoft 365. Now, in addition to that, we can say that although my next community call meeting is in February the 4th, I can actually go in and say, well, I do want to kind of start this discussion early. So I'm going to look for a time for 30 minutes on the 13th of the January for these three people. And when you run find meeting times, what that's actually doing is running the get schedule in the background of the graph. And I can go in here and pick when everyone's available. And you can see there at 9.30 that not everyone is available to attend. So I'm going to pick that 10 to 10.30 timeframe. And so we're going to review uh, content from the Jan, the Jan call. Um, we're going to discuss potential speakers here. And then we're going to uh, talk about content from engineering that we want to add. And obviously, I can go in and add new attendees. And maybe there's some pre-reading before this meeting. Maybe I have already got a list of potential Microsoft community call members that I've been drafting in a Word document. And I can click Save. Now, what that's obviously going to do is go create that meeting. It's going to send meeting invites to everyone. And it'll kind of do a nice summary of all of those events. So if I come over into um, Katie's calendar here, you'll see that there's existing ones that have been summarized where um, it's put those in. And if I go over onto the calendar, um, it will come through here that I've got one on the, this one is one I just created. And you can see that if I double click on it, it shows me all the members. It shows that not everyone's responded yet. I have automatically responded because I've created this meeting. And so it kind of integrates nicely with that calendar. And then when it comes to um, wanting to launch that uh, and, and pr preview that meeting, if I just click there, it's going to tell me as I'm running this as the note taker within that meeting that Katie, which is me, has approved it. Ale Alyssa and Todd have not accepted the meeting, so maybe they might not turn up. Shows me the agenda we initially had as well as those links to those pre-read documents we wanted. And then during the call, maybe we've got some notes, and I'm just going to throw in some nice lorem ipsum here for the sake of not seeing me type too much. And I can basically save those meetings at any point and keep resaving those as I go as a note taker. But I can also go through and add tasks. Now, I can go and create tasks that say uh, I need to catch up with um, new speakers for March. And I'm going to assign that to um, Alyssa because Alyssa is the one that normally does this. And then I'm going to make that as a deadline for the 20th and add that task. And under the covers, what that's doing is it's actually creating that planner task inside of a plan within the channel for this quarterly meeting. So if I go into my Microsoft to do as Alyssa, or I go into planner as Alyssa, uh, essentially I'm going to see all those tasks showing up. Within, within my experience. Now, after the meeting's done, maybe I wanna like wrap that up. Maybe you've got some final notes I need to do straight after the meeting or like at the end of the day, I go back and I add some more notes because I've had my day full stacked of meetings. Is that Then I can publish that meeting. Um, and so what I can do here is when I click publish, 
that's going to go away and wrap all that up and capture it um, and then summarize those notes um, into an email form and send those to all of the attendees. Um, this means that if someone needs to shoot this to other people, if they weren't in the meeting but want to hear, see the notes, they can. Um, but also the real benefit of this is, is the amount of times like I'm on a bunch of different kind of governance teams here and V teams. If I want to find previous meetings, I just go to the channel where that V team actually discusses things and I go to the meeting capture and I can see the history of all those meetings and go review the meeting minute notes from it. Um, and so this is super useful. Um, it, it is consistent. So if your whole organization used this approach, um, if you get invited to a new V team, you know where to go to look to see all those previous meetings and all the notes. And so if I jump back over to Outlook here and went into Katie's mail here, you'll see that that community call for February is sent in the email. We've got a nice standardized format here, shows the attendees at the meeting, it shows what the agenda was, it shows the notes that we're taking during the meeting, but it also shows all the different tasks that were given and, and, and what's still outstanding. So because those people didn't do the pre-reading of that document we attached, those tasks are still open, but you could go in there and mark those as closed. And when you just publish the, the uh, meeting, it wouldn't send those through. And we've done nice things like adding the fact that when you click on this, what we're actually doing is taking advantage of OneNote, which obviously we've created the notebook for that channel within the files section of Teams. And for every meeting that gets basically published, we go and create the OneNote notebook page for those. And so if you wanted to have OneNote on your phone or OneNote on your desktop, um, you could go and basically open this OneNote page in your application and have that on the go with you. Um, and again, consistency, all of the meeting minutes will all be there underneath these different notebooks mapped to uh, the team and the channel, which would essentially be um, a section within the OneNote. And then every single meeting here would, uh, would then be the OneNote pages that get created. So we're leveraging a lot of different aspects of the Microsoft 365 platform here to um, work with a common scenario that people do within companies to um, run with meetings within the context of members of a team. There's one more piece to the puzzle though we haven't shown yet, and that's the SharePoint framework piece. And so we also created this SharePoint framework web part. And the idea here was, well, it's nice that I'm getting a web bot telling me if I have pre-read tasks to do. And it's cool that I can log into Teams, that I can find out what tasks I have upcoming for me uh, by looking at individual meetings. But what about if I just want to look at all the meetings that, that this app tracks that I'm a part of? And I want to look at all the tasks in those meetings that are either assigned to me or somebody else. Can I do that in one spot was the use case for building this. And so that's what this web part does. And I have it in edit mode to start to show you here that this web part, when it's not running inside of Teams, you put it in edit mode and you tell it the ID of the team that you're running against, as well as the channel where you've deployed it. And once you put those things in there, the web part knows where to go retrieve the information via the Graph API. Now, you probably noticed that this user interface looks very, very similar except for the launch button over here. And the reason it does is because it's using, again, the same Microsoft Graph Toolkit control um, that, that lists the meetings here. And so, when I click on the meeting, the one that Jeremy made, for example, now on the right side, again, we're using a graph toolkit control. And this one is basically the list of tasks for a given bucket. And so because each meeting creates its tasks in a separate bucket, this is reading from that bucket. And so we can also filter here on all the tasks were created or just the tasks that were created for me. We didn't have time to write any actions into this page to uh, complete these tasks or change them, but that could easily be done by looking at the other code we made in the app there to make that take place. And the really neat part about this app is that this SharePoint Framework app can also run directly inside of Microsoft Team tab itself. So if I go take a look at this code here for the web part, this is the, the SharePoint Framework web part code I'm looking at now. And 
In this web part code, the first thing I'd like to point out is the we're using React, we're using SharePoint core library, we are also using here the import for the Microsoft graph controls. Inside of the actual component that is inside of the web part here, here is where we have our interfaces for the person, the agenda, and the tasks component that we use. Now, and there's not enough time to go through this whole thing, but at a high level, here you can see the agenda component. That was the one on the left side of the web part being used. And it has a click event registered for it that when you click one of them, it's going to fire load tasks. And so when load tasks fires, here you can see how we're using the tasks graph toolkit component, which is what you saw rendered on the right side of the screen. And so if we go back again, here, this is the tasks component, and this is the or task component over here, events component on the left. There's one last interesting thing, well, actually more than one, but one I have time to talk about today in the code here, and this is in the actual initialization of our web part. Let me find it real quick. Here it is. So when the component mounts, com if you're familiar with React, component did mount will fire. And inside of component did mount, here you can see where we go to and make a new graph service. And that's when we're going out to get the events by the group and channel. And that's here's our graph service class where we actually execute that call. And so uh, this, this pattern has been around for a while inside of SharePoint Framework, but if you haven't seen it before, that, that's how these things are happening here. One last thing I'd like to loop back to and give you all a tour on that. It's not a code level detail, but it is a technical detail that should help you understand the solution better. When Jeremy created the new meeting, you saw that these attachments were stored somewhere, and we saw that planner tasks were getting created. Well, really, where are they getting created? In this particular team channel, I've put links to where they are so I can show you quickly. First of all, as we all know, when you create a team, you can create a place inside of SharePoint to store the files. So this is that place that comes with that inside of the channel on Teams. And so here's the one Jeremy just made 36 minutes ago, community call for February. When he created the new meeting, we made a folder to track that meeting, and we uploaded any of the meeting attachments to this location. 